purpose of today's lab is to basically confirm um, that Newton's second law is valid. All right. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to have a pulley, a mass pulley system set up. Okay, that's going to look something like this, not exactly like this, but something like this. Okay, where we're going to have uh, pulleys strapped onto the tracks. Okay, we're going to use the metal tracks this time, um, and we'll have a mast hanging over that that will be connected via a string to the cart. Okay, there will also be some mass on the cart. What we're going to do is change the amount of applied force that is going to be acting on the cart itself. Okay, the way we're going to do that is we're basically going to move mass around in the system. So we'll start out with only a small amount of mass hanging over the pulley that would be providing the applied force. Okay, and then there'll be the cart with a couple of masses piled on it. Then in the second trial, we'll take some of the mass off the cart and move it to the hanging position, which will not change the mass of the system. The mass of the system is going to be the same every single time. But what's going to change is how much mass is being used to provide applied force. Okay. Now, what force is applying that force? Gravity. Right. We're using the force of gravity here to drive everything in this system. So gravity is actually our applied force in this uh, in this lab. Okay. Uh, Adam, can I get you? To... Okay. Um, so what we'll have is, is a changing applied force, but we will have a constant system mass. Okay, for thinking of variables here, that's what I'm trying to hint at. Okay, we are going to have a changing applied force. We are going to have a constant system mass. Now, if we're going to know whether Newton's second law is valid or not, we need to be measuring something that's going to change every time we change the applied force. So what is force supposed to affect in Newton's second law? Acceleration. Okay, so what we want to find out is, is the acceleration changing when we, as the experimenter, change the force that's being applied to the system? Now, a few other things probably have to remain the same throughout the lab. While I'm talking about how to set up the equipment, be paying attention for things you think might also need to be included in your controlled variables. Because I've given you one, you need to come up with two more that I'm not going to outright give you, okay? but that you should, if you'll catch if you're paying attention while I'm talking about the setup of the system. Everybody follow me there? Yes? Okay. So the problem, obviously, that we're investigating has to do with what's the relationship between applied force and acceleration, right? So that's, is Newton's second law valid, right? So we've talked about the design for the hypothesis, okay? The if part of the hypothesis should be a restatement of Newton's second law, okay? We're trying to confirm whether that's valid or not, so that's what the if part is, okay? If force affects acceleration and blah, blah, blah. Right? That's what we need to talk about in the if part. So some kind of restatement of Newton's second law. Okay. The and part describes the experiment. So you'll be able to do that in a few minutes after I've kind of shown you what's going to happen here. In the then part, what are your predicted results? As the applied force increases, what is going to happen? Okay, what are we going to see? Because we're going to be doing a few trials. So we're going to be using these carts, the mass of the silver carts this time, not the black carts. Okay. The mass of each one of those silver carts is 502 grams. Okay. Or as we would need it, 0 0.502 kilograms, because obviously everything we do needs to be in kilograms. Unfortunately, all the masses we have are in grams. So you will have to convert everything to kilograms when you start doing your Newton's second law calculations. Okay, um, so we have the mass of the cart plus whatever mass we put on there, okay, for each trial. 
we have the mass of the hanging masses, okay, that we're going to record in each box, right? These obviously will change because we're changing these in order to change the applied force, okay? Um, now, the applied force obviously is going to change each time as well, so we're just going to take the hanging mass and multiply it by 9.81, and that'll give us the force of gravity that's pulling the whole system. Okay, the, the acceleration you're going to get from the slope of the velocity versus time graph. So you're going to have one velocity versus time graph with four lines on it, one line for each trial. Okay, and then the slope of that line, as we learned in the last uh, unit, will be the acceleration of the cart. Okay, that's the way we want to do this. All right, uh, and then the net force, okay, you're going to calculate by taking the mass of the system and multiplying it by the acceleration. Theoretically, theoretically, what should the relationship be between the applied force and the net force for this setup? Should be, okay? Theoretically, those two numbers should be the same because we're assuming there's no what? Yeah, no other forces, period. Okay, Is that true? Probably not. Keep that in mind, because when you get to the analysis, that's what you're going to have to start explaining. You have to look at your results and explain what do they say. Because there's a couple of ways this experiment can go. Okay, There's the way that says friction's involved, and it's actually measurable, and there's a difference. And there's a way that says friction's involved, and there's other forces involved. Okay, and that all depends on kind of how we get this, this whole system set up. Okay, so we got to be looking for um, kind of in our minds reasons why those two forces might not end up equal. Friction's a good start, but there could be other places where forces are coming into play. Okay. All right. Um, so when we're setting up this system, a couple things we have to be aware of. There are very few perfectly level surfaces in this room. Okay? And you're going to have to run this on desktops okay? because you obviously can't run it on the floor. The pulley won't work very well if everything is on the floor. Okay? Now, the ramps are fairly long, so you'll probably have to put two desks together. Now, I mean, you look at these desks, some of them, you know, they're not brand new. They're, some of them are a bit bent, so they're not level. And they're actually naturally slanted toward you a little bit. Okay, they should be reasonably level this way. Okay, reasonably level. How's the way you could check that better than this? No. On your phone, there's an app. In if you have an iPhone, it's in uh, your in with your compass. Okay, so if you click on your compass and then sweep, there's a clinometer. Okay, it's like a level. Apparently, that desk is pretty level, right? Should I put it on the desk or the ramp? Yeah, probably on the ramp, okay? And just double check that you got the ramp nice and level. You may need to put stuff under some corners or whatever to make that as, as level as you possibly can, but that's how you can do that, okay? Your phone is so incredibly useful, okay? It's got a tool for everything. Everyone with me so far? Okay, so being level is important. If it's not level, then what is it like that we were doing questions about the other day? That's like an inclined plane. Okay, I probably don't want to have an inclined plane because that might bring other forces into play that I don't really want. Everyone follow? Okay. So we'll set it up like this and we'll have the uh, motion sensor that we used before and it actually clips onto the back of the metal ramp so you can clip it right in there and it'll be nice and level. Okay, just make sure you have it pointed at the cart. You don't need to put anything on the cart. It's designed to see these carts. Okay, um, so you'll tie the string onto the carts. Okay, the carts have, because we'll be using these silver ones, they've got little holes okay, that you can tie the string directly to. All right, uh, it doesn't really matter which end you use, but uh, obviously the hole it is better on this end because some of them still have this spring-loaded plunger on them. Okay, so uh, tie them in there. Uh, and then have someone starting it. Okay, same way we started it before. Hold it by the side so your fingers don't get into the field of view of the sensor. Okay, and the person who is starting this all is holding the mass. 
okay? Or not, sorry, is holding the cart, not the mast, okay? You want the, the mast just barely hanging over the pulley. So you gotta kind of measure your string so the masses are just over the pulley. So when you let it go, it goes right away. Now, here's the really important part. These pulleys that we're gonna use are made of plastic and they're really good. Like when you spin them, they spin for a really long time. They're incredibly low friction but they don't stand up very well to being smashed into by heavy weighted carts. So you need to have someone whose sole purpose is to be paying 100% attention to the movement of the cart and thus stopping it before crashing into the pulley. Because not only will the pulley break, but the pulley will become a ramp and the cart will jump off of the track and hit somebody. And then someone will get hurt. Or it won't hit anybody, and it'll crash into the floor and break. And then someone will get hurt. Okay? So stay focused when you're doing this lab. I don't want to see any of that going on. Okay? All right. Um, yeah, we want the, the mass to be able to fall as far as we can. Okay? So we want it just over the pulley. If you've got it hanging this far down off the pulley, it can only accelerate the cart until the mass hits the floor. So the farther the mass has to fall, the better results we're going to get, okay? Because this only works as long as the mass is falling, right? Once the mass hits the floor, the acceleration stops. Okay. Um, so we're gonna have results that are gonna look kind of something like this. Um, so we have the mass of the cart, 502 grams. So in the first trial, okay? In the first trial, we're going to have um, 400 grams on the cart, 50 grams hanging over the pulley, All right? So that'll be a nice slow acceleration so you can get used to everything, okay? And then we'll transfer another 50 grams off of the cart over the pulley, okay? Each trial, we're going to transfer 50 grams, okay? Now you may have to think creatively a little bit because there aren't that many 50 gram masses in each mass set, okay? So you may have to, okay, move a few more things around, okay? You guys will figure that out. Okay, and then put your other numbers in here. So applied force, uh, you'll have to put your slope calculations. Will Google Sheets do that for you? Okay, so just you're building the graph, same way you did it in the other labs. Okay, just plot a velocity time graph with the data for each run. Okay, um, yeah, so that'll be your data. Okay, and so hopefully you'll get something that looks like this. Okay, you'll hopefully see your first acceleration be quite low, second acceleration be higher, okay, and so on and so on. All right, for the analysis, okay? Uh, so the questions here are saying, first off, apply a linear fit to the graph. Okay, so put a best fit line on there, get the equation spit out by Google Sheets, all that kind of stuff, okay? Calculate the applied force, put it in the table. So a lot of the analysis is just filling in this table, right? The, the really important questions are um, four, five, and six. Seven's not in here anymore, right? You guys only have four, five, and six in there, right? Yeah. Okay. So question four, what's the relationship between net force and acceleration of the cart? Right? So write a good sentence there. Don't just say one word. Okay? It's not you know, linear polynomial or inverse. But do, give me a sentence explanation. Okay? Question five, draw a free body diagram to describe the forces involved on the cart. This, is, this question is telling me how well did you interpret your results? If there were other forces involved, they should be on your free body diagram. You don't have to have magnitudes on there. Okay, don't, you don't have to write it's this many Newtons. Just have a free body diagram where you're including all the forces that your results say were present. Okay, and then for number six, the net force and the applied force are not equal in value. We already kind of said they probably wouldn't be. Okay, explain why this is the case using your knowledge of sec Newton's second law. So you're going back to your free body diagram. You're explaining to me why you put these other forces on there, why you believe these other forces were present. Okay, so these two are really the really, really important ones because they tell me how well you interpreted your data. Adam. If you do it on a separate piece of paper, you got to take a picture of it and insert the picture. Okay, because I'm not taking any paper. It's not hard to draw a box and arrows in, in Google Docs. Okay, but if you don't want to do that, just draw it on paper, snap a picture, insert the picture. I'm fine with that too. Okay, then we got our conclusion. So restate your hypothesis. 
Talk about your results. Okay, what do your results say? And then tell me if that supports your hypothesis or not. Hopefully everyone's gonna say Newton's second law is valid. <laughs> if, that's, if that's not the case, we're really in a lot of trouble. Okay. Uh, and then for your evaluation, what are the sources of error? Okay, where were some places where maybe things didn't work out quite right or they could have been improved? Okay, list them and how to fix them. Questions on that? All right, I have that due for the Tuesday after Easter. I would say, you know, get it done like next week. Have me look it over if you want. And if you have questions, bring it in and I'll, you know, answer some specific questions about it. And then you don't have to worry about it over Easter. Okay. But if you like having homework over the holiday, that's entirely up to you. Okay. All right. Well, let's get to it.